It, you know, Weldon and I go all the way back to undergrad school. We were freshmen together. Um, um, we would go out, um, we, we have our girlfriends, and we go out on, you know, double dates and, and go out and eat. We used to eat Chinese food all the time. We were fraternity brothers. We pledged uh, the um, Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity um, together. He was number, he was one on the line, and I was number five, and it was ten of us. Pledging a, a fraternity makes you even closer. So we were charter members of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the Alpha Zeta chapter. You know, it's a thing called Hell Week, and uh, we had Hell Week, and that was the, the ten of us had to go through Hell Week, which consists of uh, a week of hell <laughs> per se. And, you know, if, if hell is anything like that, I don't want to go back there. Okay. Um, but we had to really bond as brothers to take care of each other. And, um, and so that was a, just a, a remarkable experience. Wellen and I met in our late 20s. But while growing up, I always had a vision of my partner. Never a physical vision, but of a dynamic man emotionally, socially, and who was very sensitive. Most of all, he had to be able to put up with me. Well, we met as colleagues working for the Close Up Foundation. We worked 80 hours a week, giving tours of Washington, D.C., spending two days a week on Capitol Hill, teaching the federal government process to high school students from around the country. One lunch I remember in particular at the Library of Congress, where we started bearing our hearts of being in that political environment and life after Close Up. Well, there was and has been a life after close-up. And this life and partnership has gone on for 38 years with many ups and downs, but it's been a great ride. I think probably one of the things that, one of the things that probably stands out is, <laughs> is that the fact that um, when I first moved to Atlanta and I was in graduate school at Atlanta University, I said, well, come on down. And, um, and so he says, uh, okay, I'm gonna come on down. And Weldon came down and we partied for like maybe three days straight, <laughs> nonstop. And he says, I got to go. I got to leave Atlanta. I got to go. <laughs> so I've been that brother. And he says, you know, no, I got to go. <laughs> so so I, that's most memorable. Weldon wrote the poem, Her. Two years before he met me, Basically, the poem was lamenting that he would be married. He wanted to be married two years from the day of that poem, August 2nd, 1978. He writes a new her on our anniversary, and it has been published as a book, 30 Years of Her. One of the interesting things, connecting, is that I grew up in the CME church, um, and he was United Methodist and became CME. What? And now I'm United Methodist and he's still CME. But professionally, Pastor Thomas is a pastor's pastor. He mentors, teaches, preaches. Have you ever seen your granddaddy preach? Yes. What were you thinking when you saw him preach? I was thinking that he was a great preacher and he was serious when he did that, but he was also really funny. Yeah. He'll say, um, have thine own way. Ah, my God. Ah. Have thine own way. Lord, you are the potter. I'm just merely the clay. Mold me and shape me in thine own will. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Help me be still. And then he'll go into a prayer. So that's what I'm talking about. We were in college. I remember I came to D.C. during one, maybe in the summer. And I think that was, that's one of the earliest times I can remember Dad and I just kind of, you know, chatting a little bit, talking. I thought he was cool, very down to earth. I think it was really awesome the way in which, like, the guys that you grew up with like saw him as the go-to dad. 
to talk to. He was just, he, he, he showed me how to be a man and showed me how to love a woman, how to um, take care of business, how to cover myself, um, how to keep God first. Um, he made sure that we were taken care of at all times. And he always sacrificed himself to make sure that we had everything we need. My dad was like the cornerstone of our house, you know. It was never not clear that, you know, our household, you know, wouldn't work without, without my father. <laughs> he had this thing called the Board of Education. And when he first brought it to my attention, I actually thought it was a uh, like a board membership. Like there are people around the table to talk about what punishment he was going to be, whether it be family or friends. But it was actually a board that he got from his fraternity, the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Just a little plug for Alphas. I just well, yeah, but, but, and he used to beat me with it. <laughs> that thing hurt, brother. My father always knew when I could do better than what I was doing. And that became really interesting in high school when I was almost intentionally not doing as much as I could. Why give 100% when I could give 75% and then give 25 to whatever girl I was dating at the time or whatever I was going through. You know, it's like he never let me forget that. And conversely, when I did do something very well, uh, he was never surprised. You know, he was always like, well, I always knew that you had this in you. You know, thanks for working to 100%. Integrity, integrity, integrity. Make sure that you are true to who you are. Um, never let the dollar drive you. You drive the dollar. And he also, he always instilled, and, and to also be a leader and not a follower, which is one of the biggest things being a leader and not a follower. When I was studying to be a chef, dad was diagnosed with pre-diabetes. I thought that eating healthy meant eating less or eating bland, boring foods. But I put my son's culinary studies to work. For dinner, I love a hearty meal, and a great bowl of chili has become my favorite. Here's a tip to tackle pre-diabetes. You can add beans to everything, to your salad, side dishes, soups, even turn beans into tasty spreads which is a fantastic substitute for mayo. But like my dad said, chili is our favorite. Instead of just using one kind of bean, add three different kind of beans to your chili. This adds to our three beans. Also make sure to add peppers, red, green, or even a little bit of jalapeno. That adds a nice sugary flavor or a little bit of heat. Oh, look at that right there. And don't forget the bay meat. And you'll have yourself an awesome bowl of chili. Mm -hmm. Good old chili. Good job, Pop. Does your granddaddy love you? Yes, very much. How do you know? Um, he always told me that um, when I was FaceTiming him and he told me that when I saw him in real life. I've, I've grown to know him as dad, but to see him as, as granddad making up songs like Little Bozo for Zion uh, when she was little and him engaging with Weldon now is 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 just remarkable. It's really it's really awesome to see how he lights up. Being lucky enough to have your father be alive when you become a father is a very surreal thing. And it takes for you to become your father for you to realize like how fragile the state of fatherhood really is. You are learning how to survive while teaching someone how to survive at the same time. 
you're still learning your own life lesson. You know, life is still kicking you in the butt, but you have to come home and teach this son, this daughter, this child how to survive this thing that is currently running you into the ground. Determination, I mean, if you, if you know, um, um, if you know your father's background in terms of coming out of Annapolis, um, being um, one of six, and being the oldest. So he was an example. He's the first to go to college. Um, uh, you're talking about first generation. And it was very um, determined to do well. But a great listener, compassionate, loving, and I will say one more, sincere. Dedicated. My dad is definitely dedicated. When he decides to invest in something, he is dedicated to it. I can't remember anything that my father started that he didn't see through. I would say brave because right now all of these tough treatments that he has to do um, and having to travel a lot. I know it's really hard, but he's like pushing through it. But he's such a he's such he's such a hero for all of us, and he just is is, is such a rock star. Dad is just I mean, the fight that he has, you, you know, it's um, and what I tell everybody, and not just dad and mom. I just one I say, mom, thank you for being so amazing and being right there with him. But what I tell everybody is, this is not a sad time, not even a little bit. This is a celebration. We go to Houston every two weeks. And we're going to keep doing it until he gets cured. Whatever you need, um, you can count on me to be there. I'm a brother for life. Not just for a moment, but for life. I'm your friend. I hope that you feel better soon. And I miss you. And when I come up there, I will tell you that I'll always love you. I'll always care for you and be there. I'll say this because I don't think I've ever shared this with you in person. When Monet was pregnant, we did have the the, the conversation about naming him just Richard Cain Thomas the second. And somehow it just wasn't it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough for what I wanted for my son. Right. And when I really sat down and thought about it, thought about the type of person that I wanted him to be, that I wanted him to grow into, I mean, just without a doubt, I had to name him after you. And he will always know that he was named after Weldon Gregory Thomas, the best man I've ever known. I love you, Dad. I have to go. All right, this is a really impromptu. This is not a picture, Dad. So yeah. This is a really impromptu video. Dad's getting ready to fly back. We are here in Houston, Texas with Miss Carolyn. Where is Carolyn? There you go. Say hi, hi Miss Carolyn. We're here in Houston, Texas. We love you guys. We're and Marvin. It's going back home after treatment. Da 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 da, da it's me. There's Ma. Da 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 da. In the back. Please clear it up. I have lipstick on. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. See all them folks. Yay. There you go. All right. And this is yours truly. Yep. Looking all weird because I'm the one holding the camera. This is man of the hour. Dad, what you yeah. want to say to the people? It's been a great stay. I haven't been at top performance, but I'm getting there. Learned a lot of new routines. Got a lot of new items to help take care of myself at home. And I'm just so thankful for the family being here. And Geneva and also Carolyn and Marvin. So thank y'all. Keep praying for me. I'll be all right. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, we must. Love you, Dad. We love you. We love you, brother. Uh, I love you, love you, love you. Thank you.